Elon Musk's company is aiming to launch hundreds of starships to Mars in the coming decade, during launch windows that open every 26 months and last just two weeks. That kind of cadence puts massive pressure on their launch infrastructure. And that's why what they've done recently left NASA absolutely speechless. The upgrades to their launch pad, not only can they handle a dense launch schedule, but they're also way faster to build and nearly 10 times cheaper than anything NASA currently has. So, what did SpaceX actually just do? And why is this move such a blow to NASA, especially in the middle of major budget cuts? Let's break it down in today's episode of Alpha Tech. To make the Mars dream a reality, SpaceX has had to scale up construction like never before. Right now, SpaceX has one active Starship launch pad. That's Pad A at Starbase, Texas. They're also getting close to finishing two more. Pad B, just a few hundred meters away at the same site, and another one over at Launch Complex 39A in Florida, inside NASA's Kennedy Space Center. And the newest project? It's happening at Launch Complex 37 in Cape Canaveral. That's where SpaceX recently tore down ULA's old launch pad to make way for a brand new Starship pad. Getting all four of these pads up and running at the same time? Well, that's probably still about five years away. Why? Because building this kind of infrastructure is incredibly expensive and complex, especially at the two remaining sites, SLC-37 and LC-39A. At both locations, SpaceX is basically starting from scratch, having to build everything from the launch tower, Mechazilla system, orbital launch mount, flame trench, water deluge system, tank farms, the whole setup. It's a massive project that requires close coordination between SpaceX, contractors, NASA, and even local authorities. That said, LC-39A is already nearing completion. The one big thing that's still missing? The Orbital Launch Mount, or OLM. SpaceX actually began dismantling the legs of the OLM at this Starship launch pad way back in March last year. They took it apart piece by piece, and by April 3rd, the final leg was fully removed. SpaceX hasn't officially stated why they took it down, but the most likely reason is a redesign, incorporating lessons learned from Starbase in Texas. Meanwhile, the major work still ahead includes installing all the tanks and plumbing systems needed to store and load supercooled propellants into the rocket. According to SpaceX's latest official timeline, the first Starship launch from LC-39A could take place before the year is out. Interestingly, Launch Pad B at Starbase is on a similar schedule, with completion also expected by the end of 2025. What's truly hard to believe is that construction of Pad B only began in 2023, and if they actually finish it on schedule this year, that means SpaceX will have built an entire Starship launch pad in under three years. That's an absolutely staggering pace. Thanks to that experience, it's possible that the upgrade of SLC-37 could also be completed within just two to three years, depending on how aggressively SpaceX decides to push the timeline. And let's be honest, they will. But it's not just about speed. The scale of the future Starship launch pad at SLC-37 is going to be on another level. The draft environmental impact statement released by the U.S. Space Force shows that SpaceX could be authorized to conduct up to 76 Starship launches per year from SLC-37. It also approves up to 152 landings annually, including land-based, sea-based, and even return-to-launch site recoveries for both the booster and the ship. With such an intense launch cadence, the entire complex will undoubtedly need to be upgraded to something much more robust and far safer than what we currently see at Pad A. So, contrary to what many may have assumed, while LC-39A is being adapted to support Starship alongside other priorities, SLC-37 is being transformed into a dedicated Starship hub. And that matters, because this is where high-frequency flights will happen in the future. This is the pad SpaceX wants to rely on, when Starship moves from the development phase to full-scale production and deployment. This has, quite frankly, put NASA in an embarrassing spotlight, being compared to SpaceX, a private company that's rapidly building launch infrastructure with impressive efficiency. The once world-leading space agency has struggled for over a decade, spending billions of dollars just to develop a single launch pad. Take Mobile Launcher 1 as an example. It's a massive steel structure designed to support the assembly, transportation, 
and launch of the SLS rocket and Orion spacecraft. Essentially, it functions as a mobile launch platform, allowing the rocket to be assembled inside the vehicle assembly building at Kennedy Space Center, then slowly rolled out to launch Complex 39B using a crawler transporter. The total cost of building and modifying ML-1 ended up near $1 billion, a huge leap from its original estimate of $234 million. A report from NASA's Office of Inspector General didn't hold back, criticizing NASA for accepting unproven design concepts from contractor Vencore, which led to major delays and massive cost overruns. And that's not even the worst part. The situation with Mobile Launcher 2 is even more troubling. Originally built by Bechtel to support the Block 1B version of the SLS rocket, ML-2 quickly became a lightning rod for criticism. Its projected cost exploded from $383 million to a staggering $2.7 billion, and the completion date slipped from 2023 all the way to 2026, just before the planned launch of Artemis 4. But on July 3rd, something big finally happened. ML-2 completed its stacking process, placing the 10th and final module into position, reaching its full height at last. That said, the structure is still far from finished. Work continues on the internal systems and the complex umbilical structures that will eventually connect to the rocket. The OIG report cited multiple performance issues, including poor weight management and delays in producing critical design drawings. These missteps push costs more than six times higher than originally planned. Bechtel and NASA later disputed the projections, but the OIG stood firm. Costs would likely continue to climb. After these two disasters, NASA faced harsh criticism for wasting taxpayer money and showing poor project oversight. Sure, cost overruns are common in large-scale aerospace projects, but going four to eight times over budget? That's something else entirely. In contrast, SpaceX's cost-effective approach to development, without compromising on quality, has proven to be remarkably efficient. Their segmented metal launch towers, standing over 145 meters tall, are equipped with robotic arms we all know as the chopsticks, along with the power systems to operate them. And yet, each tower only costs around $100 million, a relatively affordable price considering the incredible potential they bring. Just look at what they can do. These towers are capable of catching the Super Heavy booster, handling not just its 200-ton weight, but also the immense downward force and momentum as it returns to the pad, and the structure doesn't even flinch. No buckling, no bending. It just stands there, solid as ever. But it gets even better. In the future, these towers could also catch Starship itself. That would mean full reusability, which could drive the cost of a Starship launch down to just two to three million dollars per mission. Sure, that may still sound like a lot, but when you compare it to NASA's current average launch cost of $152 million, it's practically pocket change. In essence, if Elon's vision becomes reality, SpaceX could perform cargo and crew missions at just 1.3% of the cost NASA is currently paying for similar operations. That's exactly why the White House has proposed slashing NASA's budget by nearly 24%, from $24.8 billion in fiscal year 2025 down to just $18.8 billion in 2026. That's the largest single-year budget cut in NASA's history, bringing its funding down to the lowest level since 1961. And that's just the cost side of things. When it comes to time, the contrast is just as stark. NASA spent a staggering 11 years, from 2011 to 2022, upgrading Launch Complex 39B to support the SLS for the Artemis program. Originally built in the 1960s for the Apollo missions, LC-39B was then modified in the 1970s for the Space Shuttle era. But after the shuttle program ended in 2011, NASA had to once again overhaul the pad to meet the technical demands of SLS, a super heavy lift rocket generating 8.8 .8 million pounds of thrust. During that time, they built a new flame trench, similar to what SpaceX is currently constructing at Pad B. They also upgraded the sound suppression system, which now releases 1.1 million gallons of water in just 20 seconds to dampen acoustic vibrations and noise during liftoff. On top of that, the liquid oxygen and liquid hydrogen fueling systems, along with the ground control infrastructure, were all upgraded to work with SLS. 
The price tag for all of this? Roughly $2 billion over 11 years. And despite all the time and money poured into building a single launch pad, NASA still ran into serious problems after the very first SLS launch. The mobile launcher was scorched by the extreme heat and force of the rocket's engines. Two surveillance cameras mounted on ML-1 were destroyed and stopped working after the launch. A pair of elevator doors on the tower were blown out by the intense overpressure. There was also damage to pneumatic lines carrying nitrogen and helium, which led to low oxygen readings at the pad until the leaks could be isolated. It took NASA nearly half a year just to repair all the damage. Now, compare that to Pad A at Starbase, Texas. After the first Starship test flight on April 20, 2023, the damage was actually far more severe, including a giant crater beneath the launch mount and scattered concrete debris. Yet SpaceX only took about two to three months, from May to July 2023, to repair everything. They quickly installed a water-cooled steel plate beneath the launch mount to prevent similar destruction in the future. And guess what? It worked. Since then, we haven't seen that kind of damage again. Everything we've just discussed makes one thing clear. SpaceX is absolutely outperforming NASA when it comes to cost, speed, and efficiency. But if there's one thing they might be missing, it's mobility, especially in the aftermath of the Massey test site shutdown. Following the incident, SpaceX will now have to repair and upgrade the Massey site to support Block 3 testing and likely dismantle the remaining infrastructure used for Block 2. This creates a serious bottleneck. Almost everything needed to get Block 3 flying is either still under construction, in development, or under repair. And that could mean a long pause in testing. Now imagine if the orbital launch mounts were designed with mobility in mind, like what we saw when SpaceX transported the OLM structure for installation at Pad B. In that case, one potential option would be to temporarily remove the OLM from Pad A and replace it with a test stand for static fire tests. That way, SpaceX could continue testing the final two Block 2 vehicles, Ship 37 and Ship 38, without having to wait for Massey to come back online. Then, they wouldn't have to struggle the way they are now. Currently, engineering teams are trying to weld support brackets directly onto the OLM by using several I-beams, attaching them to the top deck plating. This setup would allow Starship to be mounted on top of the OLM for static fire testing at Pad A. Part of the workaround involves letting the I-beams extend into the center opening of the OLM, since that gap is larger than the usual transport stand used to hold the ship.